In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus proceeded on his way as he drew near to Bethphage and at the he said, Go into the village opposite. As you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on a colt tethered on which no one has buy it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying this colt? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road, and now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaim, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Please come and pick up um, a, a palm as you go in, and maybe grab an extra one if you know of someone who is already in the church that would need one.
ever-living God who has as an example of humility for the human race to follow caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thank 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every every knee should bend, and of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord 
Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater? The one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, no nothing. They replied, He said to them, but now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled, namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me 
is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man too was with him, for he also is a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. 
But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have found this man not guilty of the charges you have brought against him nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But altogether they shouted out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time, What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain uh, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country after laying the cross and after laying the cross on him they made him carry it behind Jesus a large crowd of people followed Jesus including many women who mourned and lamented him Jesus turned to them and said daughters of Jerusalem do not weep for me weep instead for yourselves and for your children for indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? 
for you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which the body was laid in it, they, went, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Each year, each of us takes time, I hope, to reflect on the Paschal mystery, the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We do this not just to be reminded of how awful it was, nor to be shocked by the cruelty, and even less, to see the injustice. What is important is what Jesus does. He does not condemn those who unjustly persecute him. They don't know. They don't understand the truth about him. He does not lash out violently to those who beat him. He does not respond to cruelty with cruelty. Instead, he gives the disciples a sacred meal to remember him. He tells them that if they wish to lead, they must be willing to serve. He shows them how to pray. Father, your will, not mine. He shows them that violence is not the path by healing the servant's severed ear. He does not participate in the unjust proceedings of his trial. He tries to get Pilate to accept the truth about him. He tries to comfort the daughters of Jerusalem. He pardons the repentant thief. All of this is done not to alleviate the suffering he experiences. It is all directed for the benefit of others. And though we see the suffering and death as his loving act for our salvation, all the way up to the end, He is teaching, leading, serving, 
providing an example to be followed. Delve more deeply into these mysteries. Holy Thursday, 7 p.m., Good Friday, 3 p.m., and then live Stations of the Cross at 6.30 p.m., and the Easter Vigil, 7 p.m. Take these opportunities not just to be horrified or disgusted or disappointed about how bad people can act, Take these opportunities to learn from Jesus how to serve with humility, how to accept God's will, how to take up the cross and follow Jesus through death to eternal life. Please stand for our symbol of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord God is our help who never abandons us. Assured of his steadfast love, we bring our needs and the needs of the whole world. For the church, that this commemoration of Holy Week bring renewed vigor to the work of spreading the gospel of Jesus the name above all names. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the power of Christ crucified may lead lands torn apart by violence to make a commitment to justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those justly convicted of violent crimes, that the suffering of Christ instill a sincere desire to change their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are weary, weighed down by the burdens of life, that they may experience the joy of Easter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, that our Lenten observance will continue to bear fruit throughout the coming year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer the Mass this evening for Carol Tony Day. We pray to the Lord. For the homeless, may Christ, who had nowhere to lay his head, act in and through all the faithful in the diocese to provide for the needs of their brothers and sisters who lack housing. We pray to the Lord. For the people of Ukraine, that the current hostilities will cease and that the nations of the world will respond generously to assist the needs of those suffering from wounds or the deprivation of the necessities of life, and for the continued success of our collection for Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear uh, please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear 
Let's close our prayer with the prayer for the 50th anniversary of the Diocese of Charlotte. Heavenly Father, accept our humble prayer of praise and gratitude as we joyfully celebrate 50 years as the Diocese of Charlotte. Throughout our history, the faithful of Western North Carolina, under the watchful care of esteemed bishops and abbots, have been nurtured by your providential hand. Confident that you invite your children to implore your constant blessings, we pray that you continue to pour forth your heavenly grace upon us. With filial affection and devotion, we further ask that you look kindly upon the prayers we seek through the intercession of our venerable patroness, the most blessed Virgin Mary, who with motherly attention tends to the needs and concerns of the church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory is number 51 in today's Missal on page 176, O Sacred Heart Surrounded. We will sing the B verses. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have a sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all his children. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet, by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim
holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion hymn may be found on page 173 in today's missal number 47 were you there with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For your convenience, baskets are available in the narthex for regular offertory and second collections. During week three of our special Ukrainian refugee relief appeal, we received $3,717 in donations. Our total support for these vulnerable innocents now stands at $14,074. Thank you so much. This is so wonderful. And the appeal is not over. We have one more week. We have one more week. It has certainly surpassed what we what we thought we were able to do, and that's so wonderful. That's so wonderful to see this outpouring of, of generosity. Let's push towards achieving a, the, this new goal of $20,000. There will be a, a 7 p.m. bilingual mass for Holy Thursday. Good Friday service begins at 3 p.m., and there will be live stations of the cross outside beginning at 6.30 p.m. The Saturday evening vigil will begin at 7 p.m. Easter Sunday Mass will be 10 a.m. in English and noon in Spanish, just like a normal Sunday. 
Following Mass, we ask that you bring your missalettes out to uh, the narthex. Um, the hospitality ministers will show you where to place them on the, on the table there in the narthex, so we're all set for tomorrow morning's Mass. Just a reminder, the parish office will be closed starting at 12.30 p.m. on Holy Thursday and will be closed for the Easter holiday. It will, uh, it will open on Tuesday, April the 19th. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our recessional is number 481, What Wondrous Love Is This, 481. and to